intimate relationship with Krishna. This is purely bogus, purely nonsense, false, phony, cheating. Huh? We say it boldly uh, because we can show these things and you can experience these things in our presence. Uh, but actually, they're very confidential. They're only for personal disciples, intimate disciples. They're not for the general public. So we don't show these things publicly. Uh, they're actually not visible <laughs> to a TV camera. They're only visible when you have a direct link with the guru by becoming a disciple. Then you can understand these things through your service. By development of service attitude, you become linked with Krishna. Just like the light is glowing because it's plugged into the electrical socket. And the electric socket is connected directly or indirectly with the powerhouse. So similarly, the spiritual master is connected through the disciplic succession with Krishna. Therefore, he's empowered. Therefore, he also emanates the same energy. The taste of serving the guru, a bona fide guru, is the same as the taste of contacting the Lord directly because the guru is connected. So if the guru is connected, then the disciple can become connected. If the guru is not connected, then there's no way the disciple can jump over the guru and find Krishna. So, and this is why most of these different religious organizations are actually bogus. They're actually false. Yeah. They get the disciples to serve the organization instead of serving Krishna. So we're a little bit different. Yeah. We try to engage people in actual Krishna consciousness. The development of conjugal love for Krishna is not manifested in women only. The material body has nothing to do with spiritual loving affairs. A woman may develop an attitude for becoming a friend of Krishna. And similarly, a man may develop the feature of becoming a gopi in Vrindavan. How a devotee in the form of a man can desire to become a gopi is stated in the Padma Purana as follows. In days gone by, there were many sages in Dandakaranya. Dandakaranya is the name of the forest where Lord Ramachandra lived after being banished by his father for 14 years. At that time, there were many advanced sages who were captivated by the beauty of Lord Ramachandra and who desired to become women in order to embrace the Lord. Later on, these sages appeared in Goloka Vrindavan, that's a misprint. Later on, these sages appeared in Gokula Vrindavan when Krishna advented himself there, and they were born as gopis or girlfriends of Krishna. In this way, they attained the perfection of spiritual life. The story of the sages of Dandakaranya can be explained as follows. When Lord Ramachandra was residing in Dandakaranya, the sages who were engaged in devotional service there became attracted by his beauty and immediately thought of the gopis at Vrindavan who enjoyed conjugal loving affection with Krishna. In this instance, it is clear that the sages of Dandakaranya desired conjugal love in the manner of the gopis, although they were well aware of the Supreme Lord as both Krishna and Lord Ramachandra. You know, there's something special about these topics that attracts distractions. See, these topics are so sensitive, they're so confidential, they're so hidden, they're so esoteric, that as soon as you try to discuss them, then there will be some interruption. You can almost count on it. Huh? It used to really bother me. It doesn't bother me anymore, and I kind of expect it. They knew that although Ramachandra was an ideal king and could not accept more than one wife, Lord Krishna, being the full-fledged personality of Godhead, could fulfill the desires of all of them in Vrindavan. These sages also concluded that the form of Lord Krishna is more attractive than that of Lord Ramachandra. And so they prayed to become gopis in their future lives to be associated with Krishna. 
Lord Ramachandra remained silent, and his silence shows that he accepted the prayers of the sages. Huh? Prabhupada used to always say, silence means acceptance. Thus they were blessed by Lord Ramachandra to have association with Lord Krishna in their future lives. As a result of this benediction, they all took birth as women in the wombs of gopis at Gokula. At that time they got it right. And as they had desired in their previous lives, they enjoyed the company of Lord Krishna, who was present at that time in Gokula, Vrindavan. The perfection of their human form of life was thus achieved by their generating a transcendental sentiment to share conjugal love with Lord Krishna. <clears throat> so what does it mean, this conjugal love? Well, in ordinary material life, we see that young boys and young girls are spontaneously attracted to one another. Nobody has to train them. Huh? Nobody has to teach them. Oh, you should like young girls. You young boys, you should like young girls. Huh? Nobody has to tell them. At a certain age, they automatically begin to become attracted to young girls. But, of course, in the material world, this uh, sentiment is perverted. The actual attraction is between the soul and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Krishna is the transcendental male, and the souls, being his potencies, are transcendental females. Huh? Krishna is called the Purusha, or the male, the enjoyer, and the uh, souls are known as Prakriti. Prakriti means who, that which is enjoyed. Uh, so the, the Supreme Lord is the origin of all emanations. So he emanates the spirit souls, the uh, jivas, as his tatashta shakti. And uh, therefore he has every right to enjoy them in any way that he wants. Uh, so uh, when the soul also agrees to this, and accepts this, that the Lord is, is the enjoyer, then the soul becomes a conjugal lover of Krishna. Well, this is a very wonderful thing. It's a very unique thing. Ours is the only spiritual lineage that actually recognizes that the soul, the ordinary living entities like you and I, can become uh, in a conjugal relationship with Krishna. So this is a very special thing, not available everywhere. Uh, in fact, it's hardly available anywhere. And it's only due to the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya revealed this mood in his pastimes 500 years ago. And uh, so we're carrying on this lineage. So a bona fide spiritual master in the line of Lord Chaitanya must be in the mood of conjugal love and must have realized this mood with Krishna or one of the expansions of Krishna. This is a very, very important point. That without this realization being actually experienced, one cannot become a fully bona fide spiritual master in the line of Lord Chaitanya. Because Lord Chaitanya was in that mood. And how can we represent Lord Chaitanya unless we're in a similar mood? See? So there's so many points and so many uh, things to understand about this conjugal love. We'll be discussing it uh, gradually more and more as we go deeper into nectar of devotion. The, the subject will come up again and again uh, as we discuss the intricacies of the science of rasa. Uh, rasa tattva. So let's go on. Conjugal love is divided into two classifications namely conjugal love as husband and wife and conjugal love as lover and beloved. One who develops conjugal love for Krishna as a wife is promoted to Dwaraka, where the devotee becomes the queen of the Lord. One who develops conjugal love for Krishna as a lover is promoted to Goloka Vrindavan, 
to associate with the gopis and enjoy loving affairs with Krishna there. We should note carefully, however, that this conjugal love for Krishna, either as gopi or as queen, is not limited only to women. Even men can develop such sentiments as was evidenced by the sages of Dandakaranya. If someone simply desires conjugal loves, love, but does not follow in the footsteps of the gopis, he is promoted to association with the Lord at Dwaraka. In the Mahakurma Purana it is stated, great sages who were the sons of fire gods rigidly followed the regulative principles in their desire to have conjugal love for Krishna. As such, in their next lives they were able to associate with the Lord, the origin of all creation, who is known as Vasudeva or Krishna, and all of them got him as their husband.